Every scene. First, his post bag has been filling up ever yeah. since we asked you Bolting. to send in your, uh, your good news stories from the animal kingdom with our vet, Dr. Scott. Uh, with, right, su with right. super vet behind. I mean, literally, there'll be no living. How <laughs> excellent is that? There'll gonna... be no living with them after this. You have I, to understand. I want a life size version cut out. I'm gonna. Is this how you, when you're doing like operations, is that how you're dressed in the <laughs> operation <laughs> outfit? You know, you know. Although not all heroes wear capes, but this guy does. <laughs> But you do. Yeah, the little oh, scully as well with the pearls. I know, I love it. So cute. Um, so uh, how can actually people send in their, their messages to you? Do you know what? Why don't you um, join my Instagram followers? Uh, so Dr idea. Scotty M, check yeah. it out. Um, I'll put a little, little thing there. Now, what I want to hear from is any, like, you know, welfare warrior or wildlife warrior that's around your local area, or maybe it's your pet that's had something tragic happened that they've come back and something really positive. I just want to bring yeah. good feel, good, good vibes to a Friday. I love that. Yeah, and animals always put a smile on people's faces, don't they? Yeah, or email us uh, this morning at itv.com. Yeah. I believe it's so that let's address. kick off with a good story. Let's go, go to uh, the Howlett's Wild yes. Animal Park. They've got a new resident, haven't they? Oh, my gosh. So if you love cute baby animals, then you are not going to be disappointed. So we have... Kumbi, oh, there he is word. in a little ball of deliciousness. He was born last year. He's 11 months old. He's born in July. Oh, he's gorgeous. Uh, and he's been looked after very closely by mum and by the whole group there at Howlett's. They are such experts in uh, breeding these animals. This is their 150th gorilla baby. Such a huge success story. Uh, and this little guy is thriving and doing really well, and now he is able to be seen uh, by the general public. So it's really exciting. Is it, do they leave it that long before? Because 11 months is... I think so it's just, it it, he's very, very much coddled by the family. They're very protective of them. Yeah, uh, quite and only right. now is he sort of stepping away from the group and, you know, um, going a little bit further afield, and so people can really enjoy seeing him close up. Uh, well, let's speak to Matt Ford now, who's Howlett's uh, Animal Director. Matt, con well, for, I mean, congratulations on this. It must be a wonderful <laughs> Hi, Matt. moment for you and the guys there at Howlett's. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing feat. Um, he's doing really well. Having 150th birth here is, uh, it's world, 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 basically, we're the first uh, collection in the world to have bred this amount of gorillas. So, yeah, for us, it's an amazing feat. And Matt, he was actually born last July. Why are we only seeing him now? Why is that the case? Uh, basically, he was a bit of a slow grower. Um, he, he's a bit of a mummy's boy as well, so he's been um, <laughs> quite, quite hidden from mum. Um, and now, now with the hot weather, he's really decided to come out, um, show his personality, and now he's off and about with the rest of the group. So it was the right time to, uh, to, to uh, let everyone know about him. Oh. And Matt, we'll ask Dr. Scott this as well in a second, but in terms of the breeding programme, obviously the age-old kind of conversation is, should we be breeding captivity? Should we not be breeding... What are the, what, what's the, why is it important, that, in your opinion, that we, that we, that we breed the gorillas? So, for us, uh, we breed our animals because we, we want to return them to the wild. So, every species that we breed here at Howlett's and at Port Lim, our sister park, are all de de destined to go back to the wild. So Kumbi is a great example of that. Once he gets to uh, a nice age, we'll send him to one of our projects in Africa and hopefully return him to the forest. Well, that's incredible. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Nice thanks, chatting Matt. to you. Best of luck. <laughs> Scott, what's your take on that? Because it's always a, a contentious issue, isn't it? I mean, I remember yes. speaking to one guy at London Zoo and he said, you know what we're trying to do here is gene preservation. Yes. So, you know, obviously this animal might not be able to return to the wild, but... But, you know, over a period of time, at least we have the gene pool to be able to do that when the time comes. Yeah, well, I think probably 100, 150 years ago, zoos were seen as places of incarceration of animals. Yeah. But now it's very much protectionism because there's a lot of areas in the world uh, like where those animals are from in the Gabon and, and uh, Uganda where um, they're under constant threat. So these seed populations are so important and their genetics are really important. But what I love about Howlett's is that they do go against the grain a little bit. Uh, Damien Asmodel, uh, who um, runs the place, uh, is actually quite against zoos, even though he has one, uh, because he's all about rewilding, about ensuring that animals don't languish in zoos and actually do have the chance to go back 
to to wild areas yeah. um, if they're um, in the right level of protection. Yeah. Uh, but this little guy, to think that he will go from being in Britain to, to going and living a, a natural Magic. wildlife. It's amazing. It's right. magical, isn't it? Right, let's, let's get through some stories. Oh, yeah, What's let's next? let's talk about the dolphin story. There's a massive yes. rescue, wasn't there? He's in, yes. in Aberdeen. That's right. So, yeah, in Aberdeenshire, a place called Fraserburgh, uh, the community rallied around. There was two uh, beautiful dolphins that were... Uh, there they oh, are. They're on the beach. Um, you can see uh, the, the community is watching there straight away. They, they stepped into action, uh, keeping them nice and wet. Uh, these animals, you have to try and get them back into the water as soon as you can because they're, they're supposed to be in water, so they're buoyant. So when they're laying down, oh, they actually the damage fire brigade. their internal organs. Uh, so you can um, call British Divers Marine Life Rescue. You can see there, BDMLR. Um, I'm actually a marine mammal medic. Uh, I've done the training course, which means that I can get called out at a moment's notice to go and help these guys. Oh, wow. Uh, and then you can see they get refloated back uh, into the ocean and even though mother and calf were there for a while, off they swam. Oh, that's great oh, news. So Just happy. a great community uh, spirit. Yeah, it's wonderful. Next up, this is Aberdeen as well. So this yes. is, what a clever boy. A dog digs for his own life. What, tell us about this. Yeah, so this poor little dog bear um, was lost um, when he was walking with his owner, Dasha. There was, uh, it was in Seton Park, uh, and he just went missing all of a sudden. She wondered if maybe that he was, he was taken by someone. Uh, and after oh. three days, no sign of him. And then his mate, Lola, who's a dachshund, thought, you know what, we're going to get that schnoz into action. And then she basically sniffed him out and found him. He was stuck down a sort of fox hole. Uh -huh. um, and then he was dug out. So have a look at this. Let's have a look. Oh, come on, look, come on. Oh, my God. The owner would have been literally <laughs> freaking. Oh, look. wow. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a lovely story. Let's, it makes you cry. I mean, it was must be okay? so frightening. Do you think she'll yeah, be okay? so look, it, the, yeah, dogs are very tough, but this, this particular dog, um, he went to the vets oh. overnight. He would have been dehydrated. Obviously, he hadn't eaten for three days because he was stuck down a hole. Uh, but, uh, yeah, now he's safe at sound and oh. back with Dasha. Ah, oh, nice. What a lovely story. Uh, OK, Cat turns up ten years after she went missing. Yes, yes. So, so just, you know, it's a standard thing that we see every day at the vet practice. You get stray cats brought into the practice. This one got scanned, and then uh, when they scanned it and they called the owner, I this guy, this. Shadow, so um, her, she was lost for ten years. Ten years. It just shows oh how important it is. Where did she go? Well, well like, amazingly, she went oh, just around the York area. It was quite local. Um, but I must say, I've had a cat um, that I knew that was lost in Isleworth in central London and went all the way down to Brighton before it was found. What? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely so, not. Know, but, but ten years later, and then the amazing thing is that Shadow remembered her owners, which That's is so absolutely nice. beautiful. The response she gave was, was wonderful. And it's probably because of a sense of smell, I would say, just remembering that smell. Because you know how so um, conjuring it is smell. You can remember things from that, and that's what she did with her owners. We have to, before we go, have to mention that this one. I mean, it's... the oldest dog, thirty-one. Yeah, is that true. Thirty-one. Look, I'm um, older than all of us, obviously. Um, <laughs> this dog, absolutely amazing. Um, he is wow. a. Oh, look, oh he's hunter. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So he's a Portuguese dog, Raffiero do Alentejo. Uh, his name is Bobby. Uh, he had a hundred guests at his birthday party, and even had a dance troupe to honour the hound. I mean, he had a cracking birthday. Is he doing um, all right? Is he OK? He's actually pretty healthy. Oh, lovely he's doing tongue. very well Look for his age. Look how the tongue is. But at the, the same time, yeah, so he's just tongue. beaten the um, the all-time previous record, which is Bluey from Australia. So, obviously, you know, a little bit disappointed about losing that. But, uh, look, congratulations. That was 31. 1939, Bluey was. That's unbelievable. How was amazing is that? I yeah. loved, I absolutely loved your post bag. It's thank a you lovely so much. Thank you, thank yes. You. So please thank do. Um, send it. <laughs> and thank you, Scully. Loose women.